Hello everyone, in this discussion we are going to look at uh, the head loss due to a sudden increase in diameter or just a sudden enlargement in the pipe section. This is going to be discussed uh, following a guiding question which says show that the loss of head when a pipe undergoes a sudden increase in diameter is given by V1 minus V2 everything squared divided by 2G whereby V1 is the velocity in the smaller pipe upstream of the enlargement and V2 is the velocity in the large pipe. So let us look at the solution of this question and uh, in this solution we are going to consider a liquid that is flowing through a pipe which has sudden enlargement as shown in the figure below. So if we consider two sections 1, uh, one and 2, two, before and after the enlargement, uh, let us assume that V1 is the velocity of the fluid at section 1,1, one, one, then P1 being the pressure intensity at 1,1, one, one, and A1 being the area of cross-section at 1,1, one, one, then it means P2, A2, and V2 are the corresponding values at section 2,2. Two, two. So when this fluid comes here and finds a sudden uh, change in diameter or a uh, sudden increase in diameter, there is formation of eddies that are at the turbulent regime of flow. Therefore, the formation of these eddies result into formation of spaces or voids where by when the fluid that flows back occupies them, uh, then to, to ensure that there is continuity of fluid moving in front, then we are going to see the loss due to this kind of spaces formed here. So the eddies are the ones that result into the reduced head and uh, this comes as a result of a sudden enlargement that results into a turbulent uh, uh, flow regime of the fluid. Therefore, for having defined these parameters, we can also see that due to a sudden change of pipe diameter from D1 to D2, the liquid flowing from the smaller pipe is not able to follow the abrupt change of the boundary. In other words, as time goes, it, it has to make sure that it creates a gradual adjustment uh, to, so that there is continuity of that fluid. But it will not be able to occupy some spaces that are near uh, the section where there is an abrupt change in the diameter. Thus the flow separates from the boundary and turbulent eddies are formed as shown above. And these are the ones that result into uh, the head loss as a result of that enlargement. Therefore, if pressure P prime is the pressure intensity of the liquid eddies on the area A2 minus A1, of course, if we have area of cross-section A1, which is smaller than A2, then the region that is created, that all that is occupied by the eddies is A2 minus A1. And the pressure at the ed if the pressure at the eddies uh, section is P prime, then HE being the loss of head due to sudden enlargement, if we apply Bernoulli's principle, P1 out of rho G plus V1 squared out of 2G plus Z1 is equal to P2 out of rho G plus V2 squared out of 2G plus Z2 plus loss of head due to sudden enlargement, then we, if we also take the fact that uh, the pipe is horizontal, therefore the the differences in data are the same at both sections. Therefore, Z1 and Z2 will cancel out. Now, that formula reduces to this, uh, whereby HE is taken to be the head loss due to a sudden enlargement and it will be P1 minus P2 divided by rho G plus V1 squared minus V2 squared out of 2G. Let this one become our first equation. Now, let's consider the control volume of the liquid between sections 1,1 one, one and 2,2 two, two. Uh, then the force acting on the liquid in the control volume in the direction of flow is given by if we take the first uh, force as a result of pressure that is propelling the fluid in front then 
uh, we have the pressure P2 that is acting in the opposite direction to pressure P1. So if it is in the opposite direction, then its force also will be in the opposite direction. Let us also consider the force due to pressure P prime at the eddies. Then therefore the Fx, which will be the net force that is propelling the fluid forward, will be P1 A1 plus P prime into A2 minus A1 minus P2 A2. But if we uh, proceed, we find that the experimentally, this p1 uh, this, this pressure p1 is equal to p prime therefore if p prime is approximately equal to p1 then we can substitute p prime with p1 and therefore this equation uh, reduces to fx equal to p1 a2 minus p2 a2 because this and that are the same and they will cancel out thereby giving us the second equation now if we consider also the rate of change of momentum of the fluid then we will be able to get the net force acting on the fluid then that net force is going to equal to the force that is uh, propelling the fluid in front so uh, momentum of the liquid per second at section 1 1 would give us mass times velocity which is momentum so if we talk about to momentum per second then it will be mass times velocity out of time which when we work out will give us density times area at section one times velocity at section one times velocity at section one this one itself is the mass per unit time or the mass rate then if we multiply by velocity then we will have the momentum of the liquid per second at section one one then of course here we will apply the newton second law of motion to attain that rate change which will give us the net force that is acting on the fluid again we do the same for mass times velocity at section 2 2 this will give us density times area a2 v2 times v2 now the rate of change of momentum will therefore equal to the net force on the fluid and is equal to fx which is equal to the momentum at 2 minus momentum at 1 which gives us fx equal to density into a2 v2 squared minus a1 v1 squared let this give us uh, equation star star so from uh, equation star star and uh, actually equation 2 therefore p1 minus p2 into uh, times a2 which is in equation 2 above is equal to rho into a2 v2 squared minus a1 v1 squared these two forces are equal and therefore if we also borrow the continuity equation we find out that uh, we can eliminate one of these areas like a2 or a1 so whichever you like you can eliminate so let us eliminate a2 and this is equal to a1 v1 out of v2 and this gives us equation three stars and therefore we can substitute it in the above equation and uh, when we substitute it in the above equation p1 minus p2 across uh, brackets a2 but in place of a2 we have put a1 v1 out of v2 and this is equal to density a1 v1 uh, of course times v2 squared uh, divided by v2 minus a1 v1 squared all of this we are substituting uh, for a2 and therefore uh, this one will go with this v2 down uh, so that uh, when we carry out the simplification we have p1 minus p2 is equal to rho v2 into v2 minus v1 so when we look at that we can also say uh, divide throughout divide by rho g so that i have p1 minus p2 divided by rho g um, then is equal to of course is equal to um, i can take a minus because what is up here so if we divide by rho g both sides we will have uh, p1 
minus P2 divided by rho G is equal to rho V2 into V2 minus V1 divided by rho G. Now, if I cancel this rho and that rho, I will have V2 squared out of G minus V1 V2 out of G. So if I call this equation 3, I can see that from equation 1 and 3, we have something that is in common. Okay? Equation 1 is here. So you can see we have something in common and therefore we can relate the two equations. We can relate equations so that we have this HE. So therefore, this HE is going to equal to V2 squared out of G minus V1 V2 G plus V1 squared minus V2 squared out of 2 G because we are putting wherever we see P1 minus P2 out of rho G we substitute it with V2 squared out of G minus V1 V2 out of G so if we do that we will have uh, the LCM as 2G divided by this G will have 2 times that minus this 2G divided by G will have 2 times V1, V2 then minus okay um, minus if we divide this it will be 1 times V1 it will be plus V1 squared then minus V2 squared as we therefore head loss as a result of a a sudden enlargement will be HE, which is equal to V1 minus V2, everything squared out of 2G. Because this can be seen from, for example, A uh, squared minus B. Um, this is uh, A minus B squared, which is A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. So, we see something similar with this and therefore we can have V1 minus V2 squared out of 2G. Thank you so much. See you.